Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Sanam Abul, with you at PTB World. In today's show, we will be taking a look at some very important developments that took place today, um, especially with regards to what is happening at the political front with the kind of statements coming in uh, from the PTI side. Of course, it's been um, an interesting year, uh, the past year, and now, of course, we've seen that this one also kicked off with a lot of developments. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, we've seen that there is still a lot of political instability as to what is going on. As of now, uh, we know that the Punjab Assembly has been dissolved. The uh, KPCM has also uh, signed the summary for the dissolution of the KP Assembly. Um, and then, of course, uh, there is also the development that took place uh, prior to that, uh, that is uh, what happened in the National Assembly with the Speaker accepting uh, 35 more resignations, 34 from the PTI, one from the Awami Muslim League. Um, and, of course, uh, this is uh, coming in the aftermath of the announcements made earlier uh, by the PTI chairman and other PTI leaders as well. Uh, referring to PTI's return to the National Assembly uh, and uh, their prospects with regards to what sort of decisions or factors they will consider, especially in terms of the numbers if they want to take uh, up uh, the uh, issue of the ouster of the Prime Minister in a tit-for-tat move, uh, exactly what numbers do they need, especially when we talk about how the PTI dissident Mr. Raja Riaz uh, is also there and there is of course now the acceptance of these resignations. Um, and then even despite that, whether or not this will be something that the PTI will be able to unfold. Uh, of course, in terms of the caretaker setup, also something referred to uh, by the PTI chairman uh, is also the assumption perhaps that the elections are going to take place uh, sometime in end of March or April. Um, and that, of course, also remains to be seen as to whether or not that is going to take place. And if not, of course, uh, what is going to be the future in terms of uh, the assemblies in KP and Punjab? And also at the National Assembly, of course, there's also the reference coming in from the PTI leaders that perhaps uh, their moves included this in a sequential format, uh, hinting towards the fact that after KP and Punjab, they're now going to move to the center. But whether or not that's something that is actually aligned with what they were stating earlier in terms of how following the dissolution of the assemblies, uh, they want the, of course, the elections at the center as well. Something that the current political setup has reiterated time and again uh, and still has not uh, mentioned in terms of something that they can actually happen. But there is, of course, the aspect of how they were earlier mentioning the fact that until and unless PTI comes to the negotiating table, there will be no general elections. Whether uh, this particular return to the National Assembly will change that and how exactly will the PTI be able to do that, uh, especially with the issue of the resignations is something that we're going to be seeing simultaneously. We also saw the JYF uh, chief uh, yesterday speaking uh, at a press conference and talking about how there will be no elections uh, in KP and Punjab, and he did not elaborate on the matter, but we'll talk more about what that means. Um, in our first segment, this is what we're going to be focusing at. In our next one, we're going to be looking at uh, the uh, possible uh, scenario with regards to a discounted deal coming in from Russia with a delegation, an 80-member delegation arriving in Pakistan today uh, and uh, talking about the very important deal, uh, especially the flagship $3 billion a Pakistan stream gas pipeline project, which is, of course, extremely important uh, with regards to Pakistan's LNG issues and, uh, of course, the kind of economic situation that the country is going through. So whether or not we'll be able to get a deal, how soon can the money flow in, how soon can we get the petroleum products, and how useful they are going to be in terms of the kind of industries and refineries we have are all issues that we're going to discuss in the next segment of the show today. For this and more, as always, in the studios, I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Patafi. We've also been joined in our studios today by senior journalist Mr. Farid Rais. Thank you very much, Mr. Farid, for being a part of the show. Um, and of course, with regards to the discussion on, on the current political dynamic, we will be exploring uh, what uh, the future entails and what sort of expectations need to exist. So let me start with you, Mr. Farid, considering, of course, that there are a number of important developments uh, that have taken place today, uh, especially uh, since we uh, looked at the resignations coming in and ex the acceptance of 35 resignations at the National Assembly and then, of course, the dissolution of the KP Assembly. What does this mean in, in terms of uh, the way Moving forward, uh, we're going to be taking a look at what is going to happen at the center and uh, what of the statements that have been coming in, considering um, that we earlier did not see uh, any major acceptance coming in from the National Assembly, but now, uh, of course, uh, a large number of resignations have been accepted. But before you answer, let me also quickly welcome in the show Rana Makul, I'm a Senator PMLN, who's also joined us online. Thank you very much, Rana Saab, for being a part of the show. Yes, Mr. Freed. Uh, thank you, Sana. <coughs> I hope so. The PTI must be surprised and they wouldn't be thinking about this acceptance of the resignations. 
uh, in the National Assembly, the 35 members of the, uh, of, of the resignation. I think so, PTI should not be worried about it because as far as you discussed in your introduction about the dissolution of the Punjab Assembly, uh, afterwards the uh, CM KPK was also sent the assembly uh, to the governor KPK for the dissolution of the KPK Assembly also. So at this moment, Pakistan Tariq and Saaf uh, uh, is looking an eye for an early election and they believe that an early election is the only solution to save the economy, to save the country, and to get out of this current uh, the challenges Pakistan is facing towards this time. I think so. Th th it, would, it wouldn't have been played any, any significant role if Imran Khan decided to return to the assembly. At this moment, and in, in, uh, earlier and late, later this evening today, uh, it was, there was a parliamentary meeting between uh, a parliamentary meeting of the Pakistan Tariq and Saab in the leadership of Imran Khan. And at this moment, there was a news coming up that the, that, that the, the parliamentary committee had given all the mandate to Imran Khan whether to return to the assemblies or not. But there is always a U-turn we have seen in the instance of PTI. Uh, they once they in the, in the, in the past they they made a narrative about when in the April uh, when the government was sent uh, by a vote of no confidence. And at the end, for till that time, until now, they, are, they, they always were of this opinion that there was a conspiracy against the government and they will not return to the assemblies. And they will not, and if they return to the assemblies, uh, first, it is not possible. And if they return to the assembly, then it will uh, back up the narrative that, okay, they will support this uh, conspiracy of sending their own government. But now, now I think so, with, the, with, the, with their 11 members' resignations earlier accepted, and now these 35 members, uh, if the total number, if you count over there, and if they are eyeing for a vote of no confidence against the PM Shabashri, I think so, PTI would not have been able to get any kind of success over there, or they could able to fulfill the numbers over there. But yes, they after the uh, getting the vote of confidence in the Punjab Assembly, PTI must be confident enough to get to 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 increase some kind of a pressure on the federal government for an early election. But as you said earlier about that, yes, the early elections or uh, the elections date which the Imran Khan is, uh, is is eyeing on, it is not possible unless and until Imran Khan and the government sit together. As right. as we have seen that the Interior Minister Rana Sanawla yesterday said that yes, okay, we will welcome uh, PTI in the assemblies, but uh, but. If they if they if they come up with some uh, some uh, some positive things or if they come up with the caretaker uh, want to talk on the caretaker setup, but other than that there will be no talk. So I think so over there that PTI this they all these kind of moves because as uh, Maulana Fazlur Rahman has also said that there will be no elections in the Punjab Assembly, there will be no elections in the KP Assembly. But you know all the things if there will be no elections mm. in the Punjab, if there will no elections in the KP Assembly, if the resignations of the PTI members of the National Assembly have been accepted, uh, counting the numbers to overall uh, 35 uh, now and 11 before it, it counting to 46 over there. So there are the number of seats which are vacants over there. So uh, if, if there are no early elections, that there is a big question mark over there that how the state of the affairs are being run and what right. will be the uh, f future of that thing as Pakistan is also negotiating with the IMF also. Hmm. So if there is some kind of a plan or if the government want to uh, make the things better over there, so there is, there is only a chance at which I see over there that there must be a talk between both the PDM and the PTI all to right. get to get all or hold of some kind of a middle solution in between to get hold of the election. All right, let's see if that is uh, even a possibility right now for the political setup. Rana Saab, of course, there was conversation earlier as well uh, with regards to the fact that uh, the, uh, the PDM will not be considering any uh, form of early elections uh, prior to the PTI coming to the negotiating table, whether or not the return to the NA, if uh, the PTI does make that move, changes any of that. And then also, of course, uh, the Interior Minister has pointed out towards the fact that there will be no conversation to the current tenure. But then again, we see statements coming in from uh, the JUF chief saying that there are no elections that are going to be held in um, Punjab and KP. What is that about? Could you explain uh, uh, the, the current way forward for the current political setup as to what they're seeing both in KP and Punjab okay. and then at the center as well? And Rana Saab, could you also explain the reason behind today's move? Thank you very much, my Islam, to all honorable participants. Actually, this total jugglery is, uh, uh, is uh, the product of abnormal behavior of Mr. Imran Khan. You might remember, once he announced uh, an attack on Islamabad back on 25th of May, there was a situation, and the government had decided to dissolve the assemblies and go for the elections. 
but he threatened that I'm coming and I'll uh, snatch the time and the date from the government and I'll topple the government for the sake of general elections. Everything he does in a very aggressive and a very uh, revengeful and a very clumsy manner. So that is the problem with him. And if one single individual is uh, playing with the fate of the country. Look at his supporters and his disciples and his MNAs and his uh, outside once they get out of the meeting they crib and they uh, always say that this is not on this is not proper but i don't know why they are so much scared i was listening to a very senior journalist uh, a few minutes before from uh, kpk he was uh, commenting on today's meeting and today's move for dissolution of kpk assembly and the reaction and response of uh, the uh, mps of uh, uh, kpk almost 99 percent were in disagreement with this move so this move is landing imran khan in trouble he is not going to gain anything out of it except for confusion confounded chaos and that uh, too uh, uh, chaotic conditions for the country this is what he is doing due to his absolutely indiscreet behavior no but uh, an issue about the elections it's a constitutional provision. The assemblies are dissolved both in Punjab and uh, in KPK. Election will be held after three months. I don't think so. Yeah, until unless there is some uh, abnormal, uh, historically abnormal situation, and uh, uh, legally it's not, and constitutionally it's not possible. So that can be reconsidered about the postponement elections. But uh, in the given situation, elections will be held. But look at the pity of the, those people who will be contesting the election. For example, 35 uh, people have been uh, removed from the list of MNAs and 11 previously. There is the, the, the 35 constituencies will go for election within two months. If they go for election within two months, and uh, afterwards, after six months or seven months, there will be again elections. Can uh, the uh, representatives or the people afford this luxury of going to elections time and again? So this is a, this is a very difficult situation uh, Imran Khan has brought for her own people and own supporters. So I don't think uh, there is any wisdom or any sagacity behind this policy, except for uh, uh, totally frag for, yes, frag fragmented right. mind that is a, with, uh, with uh, any cohesion. I'm, I'm glad that you're critical of the possibility of uh, a by-election in 35 uh, uh, constituencies. Could you explain why? Because the uh, speaker also belongs to your uh, ruling coalition. Uh, why, why did he decide to accept only 35 and why now? And uh, Rana Saab, considering the accusations that, uh, of course, the PTI leaders uh, have been leveling is the fact that this is to do with the move uh, that the PTI initially wanted to do with regards to the ouster of the Prime Minister. Uh, but do these numbers even significantly impact that? And, of course, with, with the, does it even hamper the fact that the uh, PTI chairman can still not opt for leader of the opposition in the National Assembly? I've only uh, commented on the conduct of their leader. He is creating situations for his own men as well, for his own supporters, for his own MNAs. Look at his behavior even before. No, Rana Sam, my question is with regards to the acceptance I'm, 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 of the uh, 34 I'm, I'm, I'm resignations. I'm, 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 okay. I'm answering the same, same question. Okay. That before before even moving an in, in he threatened the federal government that he'll come and he'll come like a hurricane and he'll topple everything. So the government and the party, they are, uh, uh, by all means, justified uh, uh, raising some defense. It was a defense raised by the government and by the speaker to curtail their numbers in the National Assembly for all practical purposes. Because he, is, uh, he was up to uh, creating this commotion in the National Assembly as well. He doesn't realize the critical conditions of the country. I don't know from where has he learned that election is the panacea for everything. And that too under this situation, when the country is in a bad shape as far as the economy is concerned and law and order is concerned, there is an onslaught of terrorism in his own province. Look at what he has done with his own province where he is ruling for the last 13 years. Look at the poverty, joblessness, law and order, 
total disorder, lack of security. What has he done? What has he contributed? Except for creating confusion and creating chaos. It is, this is the main reason why these, these people have been relieved and their resignations have been accepted because there was uh, 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 an assessment that his uh, electoral part Right, but uh, Rana Sab, that doesn't reduced. answer the question that why this happened now and why these 34 members and why not all of the resignations altogether and what is the change in terms yes, of the stance given I, by the I speaker question, of individual Speaker's lawmakers coming to him? Okay. Government, government waited for them. As we have been discussing, that there was uh, a passion for understanding, for amity, sitting on the, on the parlous table. That was the desire of the government. It was not only the desire of the government. This is what the president also wanted. The Honorable Chief Justice and the Supreme Court bench also asked PTI to get back to the National Assembly, sit there, discuss issues, and resolve issues. But man is so adamant and uh, so unyielding that he didn't listen to anything. He wants to do everything by beating his opponents which I think he will not uh, succeed in the process. He is damaging his, his own position and damaging the position of the country. So that is the reason, that is the reason this step has been taken. Okay, I'll come back to you. Um, uh, Faru, considering, of course, that when we take a look at the situation, there was also a statement coming in from uh, PTI leader Fawad Chaudhary, who spoke about how perhaps that after KP and Punjab, they're now going to move to the center. But um, help me understand how th this is sequential uh, in, in terms of the way that is, it is being stated. Is that even something that's, uh, that was in line with PTI's original move, considering that the dissolution, of course, was there for uh, early elections to be held? And of course in the National Assembly as well and so their return perhaps seems contradictory and secondly um, whether or not of course there's much that uh, PTI um, hasn't had to back in terms of their claims many that have been made in the past but there was of course uh, a surprising move in the sense that they actually went with the resolution in Punjab and KP is something as such as the return uh, at the center and the NA also a possibility all right uh, Sana A of course uh, to answer your question shortly uh, you know, uh, very quickly, uh, is uh, that yes, it is a U-turn that PTI actually kept on uh, talking about yesterday, day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it amounts to much. But uh, with your permission, I want to actually first uh, uh, pay homage to Pakistani media. Uh, our media has the, uh, knows the art of uh, hitting the target without, uh, you know, uh, while missing the point. Uh, since, uh, uh, you know, this decision came in, I've been listening to the truckload of pundits that dominate television channels, and I haven't seen anybody actually consulting the original source, uh, you know, the decision maker before actually coming up with their own analyses. So that was fun, and that was also funny in a sad, tra tragic kind of way. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think that one thing is very clear. PTI has been demanding that their designations be accepted. And uh, the Speaker National Assembly has been saying that uh, uh, only when I am sure that you can, uh, you know, those individual people want to do it, he will accept it. Uh, now, what is the fun part of this? Uh, these 35 people who have been unseated are the people who have gone on record on television uh, in one program or another, or they have spoken at public rallies saying that their designations are original. Uh, so uh, it was a very comfortable uh, choice to make. Uh, okay. uh, media is so fa fascinatingly, uh, you know, skewed in Pakistan that only a few days ago when PTI actually pulled a surprise in Punjab and it uh, managed to actually dissolve the assembly, there was a, you know, endless oohs and ahs on television. Look, PTI has done everything. Uh, what a maestro they are. And now, when the ruling coalition does the same thing, they are indicting it. They are complaining about it, right? So this is an amazing, uh, uh, you know, turn of affairs. But uh, my humble submission is that uh, naturally, the original impulse came from one fact. Today, uh, 35 people's resignation was accepted, but not Imran Khan Saab's. Uh, uh, you know, the message is very clear that trying to run or sabotage the National Assembly through remote control will not work. All the people that you trust, uh, they are on public record. 
and that's why their designations have been accepted. If, we, if there is going to be any opposition leader, it is either you or Dan Rajabia. So this is the simple fact that has uh, uh, materialized, and I think that there's no harm in this either. Mm. Uh, there's going to be an election in two months, and uh, we will be able to see how popular PTI is now in Punjab, in Islamabad, in Karachi, elsewhere. So uh, uh, more elections, not less, right? Uh, regarding what uh, PTI has done to its own, uh, you know, uh, ruled governments, I think at this moment, while our media will keep on framing uh, this narrative as master stroke or some kind of strategy, uh, to me, there is a party that has thrown away incredible advantages it had. First, it uh, walked out of the assembly and resigned twice, thrice, and their own uh, deputy speaker actually accepted all their designations at that time and mass, right? Mm. According to their own narrative curve or their narrative arc, that has been done already. But uh, after that, they have thrown away the keys to the most populous province where you could have really, really made a difference. Uh, Chaudhary Parvez Elai knows his, his work cut out, right? And he could have done uh, enough development in the province, most populous province in the country, hmm. to have an impact in the next election. They have thrown it away. And now Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, their final fortress, is gone as well. So I don't see any master stroke. All I see is this scurrying which is a product of uh, realizing that they had a gamble uh, and they, went, uh, they, they actually gambled big uh, at the time of appointment of army chief. And then they lost. And when they lost, they have been actually using their media goodwill to keep on uh, framing the narrative as if they are still the ascendant party. The reality lies in what happened in Karachi. Right. They lost. Right. Um, uh, Mr. Farid, considering what uh, Farooq has been saying regarding the resignations and the appearances on TV, something that was echoed by the Interior Minister as well as the reasoning perhaps behind these acceptances. But um, when we take a look at the situation, do you think, do you possibly see any more acceptance of more resignations coming in anytime soon? And secondly, if there is a return to the National Assembly by the PTI, and there's of course a lot uh, of talk with regards to the PTI mulling over legal possibilities of preventing uh, the PTI turn course from voting in favor of the PDM, what sort of possibilities exist uh, for the PTI to actually be able to prevent that? How will that be possible? Actually, let me allow to continue a few words, to sure, say a few sure. words, uh, as uh, Farooq already said about the Karachi. I, I wish to comment over this there. As the PTI is, 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 is stressing upon the early elections, but as we see in the Karachi, actually, uh, w w they accepted that, as Imran Khan said, that, okay, uh, our, our preparations were not well enough over there. As they already said that yes, we had a popularity on the social media, but we didn't. We, we were we were, we failed to prepare ourselves. And what happened in Karachi? Actually, they must learn a lesson from there. Over, okay, do they have? Because there are some questions as a journalist which which arise in my mind. Do they have some kind of a strategy? What they want to do? What what they are tr what they are thinking to do? Do they have any 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 economic team? As they claim about it that it doesn't it doesn't make any difference whether the current government completes its tenure till August, whether the whether the elections would be held in October. Okay, it will it will it will ruin it will further dent the the state. Uh, but they wish they want to save the uh, state they want to save the economy they want to save the people of pakistan but the biggest question over here do they have any kind of a strategy because coming into the national assembly and if they want to want to want to seek a confidence vote uh, from from the prime minister i think so this move the acceptance of these res resignations today as earlier stated by the speaker that he will not accept uh, the resignations in bulk uh, you must remember that a delegation which was headed by uh, uh, the former Speaker National Assembly, uh, Asad Kaiser, uh, and they, uh, went, they went to meet the Speaker uh, National Assembly over there, and they requested to accept the resignations uh, in, in the form of the group. But at that time, the Speaker National Assembly, Raja Parvez, as you have stated, that he will going to listen to every individual and afterwards will decide on individual basis that either to accept the resignations or not. So at this moment, the PTI must understand that a quick response has been given, a quick, a quick stroke has been played by the government by accepting these 30, 34 resignations and one resignation of uh, Sheikh Rashid Ahmed. So they must understand that if they are, 
uh, uh, planning to 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 uh, move towards the center as imran imran khan said that after punjab he'll come to to islamabad the federal mm. government and then he'll go to the center but he must remember the that that the results of the local uh, uh, body elections in the sense and especially in karachi pti is standing nowhere the mandate which the pti got in 2018 they must understand that now they have to struggle on their own they have to struggle on on on, on their own will their own support and and, and there is nothing uh, and no other powers who, uh, they are there who can support the pti so at this moment as to answer to your question over, mm. over here that Imran Khan must must understand this that by making all these kind of moves it will just put the country in an anarchy we must understand the economic challenges today as of today as we are we seen that the stock market had a very deep dip today uh, the the IMF the dealings with the IMF it has been delayed so at this moment if this political turmoil will be there as the Imran Khan is uh, keep is knocking at every individual every door and making some kind of the political instability over there if this kind of a political stability will remain mm. I fear I fear uh, that the election would not be have would be going to be held in 2023 20, over there because if, if, really. if this if this kind of situation would be there there is a provision <coughs> in the constitution also to extend the government over there but let's see i don't think so i'm not a policy maker of the part of the government but this kind of this kind of political stability okay. will not uh, will not be very good for pakistan all right let's ask rana saab uh, these, uh, one, these one questions one yes yes rana saab i'm coming to you but let me add to this uh, two things that mr farid was referring to one that there was this was uh, a great stroke by the government, the acceptance of resignations, whether you agree with that or not. And secondly, that the elections would not be held in 2023. Is that something that you agree with? But also add to that, Rana Saab, the question that I wanted to come to you with was with regards to what is being spoken about a lot also is the merger between PTI and PMLQ as well, uh, which of course still remains to be seen. But there's a lot of talk as to uh, whether or not this is something that is going to happen. How exactly would you see this development and how it would impact your politics, especially in the future in Punjab. Uh, thank you, Sna. The situation is undergoing drastic changes every time, every day, hour to hour. Uh, I may also submit uh, that Imran Khan is a, not an MNA nowadays. He was disqualified by the Election Commission. So he has not taken oath and he cannot because by inference, his disqualification that happened after he was uh, elected in those in those constituencies. So he'll have to wait to be eligible for next general elections. That's a judgment of the uh, and that of the election commission, and that order has not been set aside. So I I submitted because uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Patafi said yeah. that he has not been uh, uh, he, his resignation has not been accepted. So there is no question of resignation, or sir because he's uh, no more MNA, he's a disqualified MNA. So the, what about this uh, Chaudhary Prevedalai? Prevedalai is uh, in, the, uh, in the devil within, in the devil and the deep sea, between the devil and the deep sea. First of all, he was jumping over to uh, PTI. Now there's a notice for dismissal uh, from uh, the president of the party. And he's also feeling that uh, Imran Khan is goofing up things. So his craft, uh, even craft of Ruvedalai has failed with Abhi Imran Khan because he couldn't stand the pressure and uh, the suicidal things Imran Khan is uh, now carrying on, that will be harming everybody, his party and, uh, and uh, his uh, peers. Now uh, there is a question of elections. I personally think uh, there could be circumstances, but elections should be held in time. And uh, uh, Fareed Saab uh, very happily said it's a master stroke or a very competent stroke and uh, they have shortened the bullseye. I don't think that it's a stroke. It's unfortunate on the part of the parliamentary leaders and the democrats. They should collectively and individually behave like democrats they should not try to bulldoze everything against each other they are harming the country they were given opportunity time and again to rule in a sensible manner but they have not been able to do this and it's therefore 
uh, the, the other uh, stakeholders, they come in and they jump in and things get further more uh, spoiled. It's unfortunate. And there has to be some sense of responsibility. I think uh, we are losing a lot in this confusion. As a country, it's such a infatuating country, and we're not being very, very honest and very uh, discreet to uh, this country. The politicians should realize, no, the ball is in their court. Imran Khan and other ones. As far well as uh, my party is concerned, they are on the receiving ends. All filthy abuses uh, or uh, all derogatory remarks and uh, <coughs> every type of attack they have been facing from day one. So I think we change our behavior, we change our diction, we change our policy, we change our vision in the interest of the country. That's the answer to the question. Yeah. <coughs> right, absolutely. And of course, that, that should happen. Of course, uh, Farooq, uh, in all of this, of course, there's also the, the role that the president uh, has to play or is expected to play. And of course, I understand the position of the president, but there's also <laughs> a, uh, some sort of party affiliation. There's been some meetings in the past that have been held with the PTI chairman as well. Yeah. Um, how is this, his role uh, looked at by different political parties and perceived in terms of his objectivity and in terms of how the situation is now unfolding or is expected to unfold at the, uh, at the center in the National Assembly with him asking the PM to get a trust vote? Uh, right, uh, Sana. Uh, let me first uh, thank Adana Thap for correcting me, I, uh, it slipped my mind that Imran Khan Saab is, uh, uh, you know, there is the suspension. Um, uh, although I don't see that uh, that is a final, you know, something set in stone. Uh, it can be cancelled, and Imran Khan Saab is already uh, returned from seven, seven constituencies as well. Uh, till the time, of course, he doesn't take oath, it is going to complicate the matters. Uh, but regarding president's role, I think at this moment, the only party that seems to be politicizing his role is PTI. Uh, that is not all uh, Pakistani pundits or Pakistani media also do the similar kind of thing. President is the head of state. He can, of course, meet uh, uh, you know any, any politician he wants. And of course, the prime minister, former prime minister, uh, you know, he once belonged to that party, so if he meets him, that's okay. But remember those days when in, in Punjab there was talk of governor hmm. actually in, uh, asking a vote of confidence or demanding a vote of confidence. At that time, we kept on hearing PTI people telling us that the president might uh, actually sack. Uh, the governor and replace him with somebody else. Mm, did that, that happen? Mm. Uh, it did not. Similarly, uh, there are other, uh, you know, uh, positions uh, uh, regarding vote of confidence uh, as well. The president's office is supposed to be above all this. So he is going to, and I, I, I understand that governor's, uh, g governor's office should have been say in the similar way it wasn't at that time. Uh, but the president's office is above this. And if he wants to demand a vote of confidence, he will do it based on some kind of shifting reality, right? There was a, a possibility that MQM could have actually, uh, so, uh, you know, separated their ways. Had that been done, uh, the number game would have been before our eyes, and somebody could have theoretically said the, that, that the government, because PTI is still part of the parliament, their designations have not been accepted then uh, you can come back and you can uh, rule, right? Uh, or you can uh, prove your uh, majority. That did not happen. Uh, regarding uh, what uh, Rana Saab was earlier saying uh, about uh, this not being a master stroke and this being, uh, you know, something that might embarrass the parliament. Look, my concern is simple. Uh, I have seen remarkable kind of uh, politics that, that went on since April. Mm. It was, uh, uh, you know, politics on steroids. It was on acid. And, uh, you know, uh, when does it happen that you are asked to take a vote of confidence and you dissolve the assembly, right? Uh, when does it happen that, uh, uh, you know, uh, chief minister uh, is being uh, voted out uh, from Punjab? Mm. And at that time, you actually physically try to stop that. That was happening when Buzdar Sa was there. Uh, the un, uh, uh, while Rana Saab is very conscientious and I respect that, my uh, only humble submission is that this is real politics. And in real politics, if one side is going to play 
not according to the book. Other side can actually play by the book and get a point. It will score a point, right? right. Uh, just regarding my media peers, uh, what is that uh, Urdu saying? Jo chahe aap ka husne kare, fasad kare, right? Uh, you you want to make one side total evil. You want to make the other side total hero. That mm. is your choice. But there are no heroes. There are no villains. There are no angels. There are no demons. Mm. This is merely politics. Right, and, and of course, I, we hope that this is something that is also uh, present in the minds of our, our p political decision makers as well, and they're able to see the sense of that. Thank you very much, Rana Saab, for joining us mm. and being a part of the discussion. Please Great. have you with us in the next segment as well. We'll take a short break and continue the discussion on what is going on at the economic front and hopefully a possible discounted deal from Russia. how regional connectivity is shaping the future. Perspectives and much more on our new show, Game Changer. What shapes the world today? Is there politics? Or mutual interests? Nations or the regions? Game Changer will explore the potential. Prosperity, sustainability, socio-economic development, and global connectivity. Be with us and witness how the game changes. Welcome back to the debate. We're now going to be talking about the high-level 18-member Russian delegation that has reached Islamabad and it is going to attend the 8th session of the Intergovernmental Commission on Trade and Cooperation that is scheduled to take place from the 18th to the 20th of January. Uh, but of course, uh, the important aspect of uh, the visit is also with regards to the bilateral talks on oil and LNG and of course, uh, the uh, flagship $3 billion Pakistan Stream Gas Pipeline project, uh, which of course is something that we have much expectations from. There is, of course, uh, the economic challenges that exist in terms of our energy sector. And the discounted uh, petroleum products coming in from Russia will contribute a lot and will save Pakistan about $2 billion annually. And so this is going to be important in terms of uh, where we are standing today and how we want to proceed, especially in terms of the energy sector in the future. Uh, much, of course, that has been done uh, from the political setup as well with regards to energy, energy conservation and ways in which Pakistan uh, can improve its uh, current economy economic conditions. Um, Mr. Farid, considering of course that this is something that we have been hearing especially coming in uh, from the ministry as well, this emphasis on the fact that uh, we want to get a discounted deal from Russia and the earlier visit that happened to Russia uh, was pointing towards perhaps some sort of success in that and now of course the kind of follow-ups that we see we might be able to get uh, a deal that is beneficial for Pakistan but there's still question mark in terms of um, how exactly we're going to proceed, how much of a discount is there and how soon can we get that. Currently, of course, we're facing the shortage of supply and then in the future as well in the remaining fiscal year, as you pointed out before, also that the IMF talks are still remaining, that economic challenges still remain and our energy sector is one that we really need to focus on. How do you look at the development, especially in terms of this particular visit, as to it how it will contribute towards uh, finalizing and solidifying a deal that we really need? Asana, uh, it was a long-awaited thing, uh, as you discussed about and as you said about, that Pakistan is facing with the, uh, the economic situation. At this moment, our economy are, are, are depleting uh, the, the foreign reserves we have, uh, the, and more specifically, the, the gas reserves which we have, which, which are uh, declining by 10 by ten percent annually. We are very in need, and we, have, we, 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 we uh, desperately need this, this kind of... Uh, uh, energy uh, backups and, and uh, what you said that the, this high-level delegation is in Pakistan now. I think so, okay, 
at this moment, the government must must uh, it, it should focus upon on making the deal, and, and and it totally depends upon the discount which Pakistan will get. As you mm. mentioned, that Pakistan will save around two billion dollars. It could totally depends upon the how much how yes. much percentage of the uh, discount Pakistan mm. will get in this energy, this LNG, this oil. As the previous PTI government also claimed about having a deal with the Russia, but at that time, as the, as the reports and all the things are in, fr in front of us, that at that time there was no particular deal and there was no particular understanding between the two countries. Yes, it might be, a, there must be a, some, some kind of a, uh, coining up and some kind of a thought process behind uh, the, uh, the by, 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 by fulfilling the energy needs of Pakistan. But right now, the visiting of this high-level delegate from the Russia over there, it makes uh, the sense that right now the government will uh, try its level best to make some kind of things with, with, with this delegate. And I think so at this moment it is very, very um, uh, badly needed for Pakistan that it should, it should sign a deal which is not only beneficial for the, for, for, for the country but also for the energy resources which are being consumed by the industries, by the people because as we all see over here, the government had to increase the gas prices. The government is compelled to increase the gas prices and it, sh it, it will be done it will be done gradually mm. by not now not putting further burden on on the, on the people over here and also uh, there th we, we have seen the gas load sheddings over here in different right. cities of Pakistan so it is only because of because Pakistan is, 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 is losing its reserves it badly needs the energy uh, reserves in Pakistan over here and this kind of a deal will help out the people of Pakistan by uh, combating this uh, right uh, right. Uh, Farooq, uh, what sort of factors do you think uh, are impacting this particular deal at the moment, especially on a, on a, at a global scale also, and all, in, in particular focus with the way that Pakistan's economic challenges um, uh, exist today, especially when we take a look at how the Ninth Review is still pending, how there is, yeah. of course, global economic concerns, uh, glo yeah. global fuel supply concerns, there's, of course, the conflict in Ukraine, um, and then uh, there is, uh, of course, the issue whether or not we're going to be able to uh, uh, be uh, able to secure a deal uh, without the IMF's uh, green light as well. I is this something that uh, we're, we're factoring in in the way that we're looking at these discussions? Uh, right, uh, Sana, I think uh, that there are two ways to look at this situation, right? One is system level analysis that is international system and whatever is happening in Ukraine. Uh, because of that, there are many dynamics and of course there is um, a divide on, on that matter all over the world and you know on which side of the divide I belong. But then uh, I'm also the, s the same person who has been since mid-90s writing in papers constantly uh, that uh, Pakistan should go to Russia and we should build robust bilateral relations, right? Uh, uh, it was unfortunate that in the Cold War we were juxtaposed against each other. So it is great it, uh, if we can actually put that aside and actually build on bilateral relations, which are good. Because, you know, Russia uh, uh, has a lot of influence also in Central Asia, which is the cradle of our civilization, Pakistani civilization. So there has been back and forth for quite some time. We saw that there was a good deadlock because of various circumstances, perhaps because of previous Afghan government, then, of course, of Russia's own issues, and then, of course, naturally, Indo uh, India's veto on these matters as well. But Pakistan has weathered that all. Uh, now, uh, let me remind you how rewarding this relationship is for Pakistan at this moment. The second way to look at it is bilateral, right? Uh, uh, recently, if you remember, there was flower crisis in this country. Uh, there was wheat crisis in this country. At that time, of course, there were strategic reserves by the provinces which were released. That's why it, it uh, was brought down. But that was also the time when two shipments of wheat arrived from Russia. At this moment, because Russia is one of the most sanctioned countries, uh, its product comes cheap. And then they are the same people when India and Pakistan were having these hostilities, when India said that it had carried out a surgical strike and there was a possibility of a follow-up attack. At that time, Russia's uh, military delegation was coming to Pakistan. They did not stop. They came over. So the bilateral relationship is very rewarding. And at this moment when, uh, you know, Pakistan, uh, the situation is such that because of this uh, Ukraine war, uh, Europe's uh, need for gas and oil is, has increased because they're not getting it from Russia. 
now what happens is that we usually go to the market and we go to Qatar, other countries to get it. And they say that it is already sold out because Europeans are paying very, uh, you know, high bu um, uh, major buck for this, right? Mm. So that is a circumstance made in heaven for Pakistan and Russia. Russia is ready to sell its product, its gas, and Pakistan badly needs it. So in that situation, it is very opportune. Uh, and um, uh, there were concerns that America is perhaps going to veto or Europe is going to veto. But then we heard the State Department saying that whosoever wants to get a fair deal from Russia, they're open to. Right. And uh, because Russia has another bottleneck, that is that they're going to deal only in ruble or certain currencies that include China's yuan. Hmm. And we are also in agreement with China regarding yuan's uh, use. Right. We can procure it, and this is good news. Let us hope in coming days we build the bilateral relations that goes beyond the Ukraine uh, you know, crisis and which is more rewarding to both sides. Absolutely, and that, of course, is the hope. Thank you, Farrakh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Farid Rais, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. There is much uh, hope coming in, of course, uh, from this particular delegation's visit, and we hope that we get to see uh, it result in tangible points for the people as well and for the energy sector. That's all that we have from the debate. We'll see you tomorrow.